Hello, everybody, and welcome to the From Poverty to Progress channel, the channel that is devoted to promoting an awareness and understanding of human progress. My name is Michael Magoon, and I'm the author of the From Poverty to Progress book series. The first book in my book series is entitled From Poverty to Progress, and it explains the origin and causes of modern progress. My second book, which I'm excited to announce is now available on pre-release, is about applying those lessons so how we can keep progress going, both in the United States, Western Europe, and in developing nations. Today, I'm going to cover the top 10 technological innovations of the 19th century. Now, most of you who know about history know that the 19th century was the, one of the most amazing periods for technological innovation. So today, we're going to go through what I believe is the top 10. So here's my criteria. First of all, they need to have been invented between the years 1800 and 1899. They had to have major and long-lasting impact on the world economy. That impact may be in the 19th century, or it may be later in the 20th century. It can be a single technology or a system of related technologies. And yes, this list is quite subjective. It is based on my own personal beliefs. Now, I'm going to present the top 10 a little bit differently than most places. Instead of counting down from number 10 to number 1, I'm going to go in chronological order so it paints a story of technological innovation in the 19th century. But I will hold number one to the last, and I will mention a few honorable mentions before then. But before I start this, I want to go over a little bit about what life was like back in 1800, because it was very different than today. Almost all the advanced societies during this time were agricultural societies whose leaders were kings and emperors. Modern democracies were almost non-existent. And churches were established by the monarchy. And people didn't have a choice as to which religion to uphold. Very few people lived in cities. The vast majority of people were farmers who lived in villages or rural areas. And they had an estimated per capita income of $500 per year or less than $2 per day. And yes, that is indexed for inflation. They had a very short lifespan, which measured in the 30s, and the fastest communication and transportation was via the horse. And as far as everyone was concerned, this is the way life had always been. There were a few commercial societies that were different, that did have lots of cities, that did have a dynamic economy. For example, Britain, Netherlands, and the United States. But they were very rare compared to the rest of the world. A few notes before I get started. I'm going to give credit to a few people for each one of these inventions. But in practice, technological innovation involves many different people. So it's not just the inventor. So when I give a name, keep in mind that there were actually hundreds, maybe even thousands of people that were very important in creating this new technology. And because of that, the year of the invention is somewhat arbitrary. Each one of these technologies went through a process of, of having first an idea, then a prototype, then a first practical product for sale, and then there were constant improvements thereafter, and then variations of that technology to solve different problems. Coming in at number 10 is the telegraph, which is generally credited to Samuel Morse, in 1838. The telegraph radically increased the speed of point-to-point -point communication. Up until this point, the horse was the fastest means of communication. The telegraph lowered what would take months, in some cases, down to minutes or hours. Because of its superior speed, telegraph lines popped up connecting all the major cities and ports. One of the most important impacts of the telegraph is that it enabled the growth of large, widely dispersed organizations, particularly corporations. Before that time, a company was typically in one metro area because of the difficulties of communication. The telegraph enabled national and in some cases international corporations to be established. The telegraph also enabled the growth of the European empires, particularly the British Empire. In the past, it would take months for the sailing ships to go from one end of the empire to the other, but with the telegraph, it would take minutes or hours to do so. Coming in at number seven is the steel 
tipped plow. Now, the plow had been around for thousands of years. There was nothing new about that. But in 1838, John Deere invented the first steel tip plow. Up until that time, plows were made of iron. Now, a simple change in material doesn't seem like a great invention, but it really was because it opened up a new biome, the temperate grasslands biome, to plow-based agriculture. Up until this time, agricultural societies were in three major areas. First, along major rivers. Second, in the temperate forest biome, which you can see as a mustard color here, which is mainly in Europe, East Asia, a little bit of the Middle East, and the eastern United States. The third place was the Mediterranean biome, which is primarily, not surprisingly, in the Mediterranean Sea. So up until 1838, virtually all recorded history were in those areas. But John Deere's steel plow enabled agriculture to move out into the temperate grasslands, which are brown in this map, including the Great Plains, where John Deere lived, the Pampas of Argentina, the steppes of Ukraine and Russia, and also bits of Australia and New Zealand. Today, the temperate grassland, because of its enormously productive soil, is one of the, today, grain exports, particularly of wheat, come overwhelmingly from the temperate grasslands biome. And that would not have been possible without the steel plow. Coming in at number four are actually two separate technologies that are related to each other. They're both related to the production of steel. First was the Bessemer converter, credited to Henry Bessemer in 1856. This radically lowered the cost of steel and made steel the dominant material of the Industrial Revolution. Coming soon after was the open hearth steel making furnace, generally credited to Carl Wilhelm Siemens in the 1850s, and Pierre-Emile Martin in 1865. These two new types of creating steel turn steel into something that was an exotic and expensive material, into a material that was competitive with iron, and in most cases was superior to iron. Even today, steel production is a leading indicator in industrial production. And that's mainly thanks to these two technologies. Coming in at number nine is the communication technology, the telephone, credited to Alexander Graham Bell in 1876. The telephone revolutionized person-to-person -person communication. Now, I know today we're all used to having our cell phones and being able to talk to anybody we want whenever they want. But before the telephone, this was impossible. You had to essentially either write or you had to be face-to-face -face with the person. The telephone technology enabled people across the continent to have real-time discussions with each other. Now, the telephone was not in widespread use in the 19th century at all. It was really not until much later in the 20th century that it began to have its massive impact, but it was absolutely one of the dominant communication tools of the 20th century. Coming in at number two is the internal combustion engine. Now, you can make a claim that this should actually be number one, but I'm going to hold off on that for a little bit. Now, the internal combustion engine actually has many different people who deserve a lot of credit and gradually improve it. So I'm only going to focus on a few. Nicholas Otto, George Brayton, Carl Benz, and Rudolf Diesel. They effectively created the first practical alternate to the steam engine, which was invented in the 18th century. And most importantly, it enabled the invention of the automobile, trucks, airplanes, and modern ships. Now, interestingly, the internal combustion engine had very little impact on the 19th century, but it had a massive impact on the 20th century. Virtually every major transportation device of the 20th and 21st century is powered by an internal combustion engine. Life as we know it would be radically different without this technology. Coming in at number three, and another one that's a real threat to be number one, is the electrical grid. Now, I know a number of you are thinking, well, wait a minute, that's cheating because that's actually many different inventions. And yes, that's true. There are different technologies that are bundled together. But I do think 
They're closely related enough and they're important enough that they deserve to be on this list. The electrical grid is credited to Thomas Edison, who created the first electrical grid between 1879 and 1882. Now, most of you probably think that Thomas Edison's greatest achievement was in inventing the light bulb. Well, he didn't even actually invent the light bulb. He improved the light bulb. But the important point is why he improved the light bulb. Thomas Edison had the idea of creating an electrical grid where electricity is generated, transmitted, and converted. But he needed a practical product in order to create demand. So he thought that if he could invent a better light bulb, he could make his idea come to fruition. And not only did he have the idea, but he also created the first power generation stations and electrical grid, first in London and then in New York City. Why the electrical grid was so important was because it enabled centralized energy production and decentralized energy usage. Without the electrical grid, it's impossible to imagine modern life. Very closely related to the electrical grid is number five, the steam turbine, credited to Charles Parson. In 1884, the steam turbine is the most commonly used means for generating electricity, but it also was used in ships for quite some time. With all the talk of renewable energy, it's important to realize that the steam turbine is still the core of the power plant, including coal power plants, natural gas power plants, hydroelectric dams, nuclear plants, geothermal, and some types of solar. The vast majority of electricity production today is done via steam turbine. Before then, it was directly from combusting coal, and the steam turbine increased the efficiency by burning coal to boil water, and the water is what turned the turbine and actually generated the electricity. Coming in at number eight is the automobile. Now, the automobile had Almost no impact on the 19th century, but I think you all understand the importance of this technology in the 20th century and still today. It was credited to Carl Benz in 1885. Yes, Benz of Mercedes Benz. And still today, it is the dominant means of personal transportation. And while some people believe that Automobiles are outmoded and they need to be replaced by urban transit. There is a clear relationship between levels of wealth and driving cars. Essentially, the wealthier society is, the more they choose the car for their own personal transportation. Coming in at number six, another electrical technology is the AC electric motor, credited to Nikola Tesla of Croatia in 1888. Now, there's Tesla has made a big comeback recently. Tesla has made a big comeback in popularity because of the car company. But I'll bet you a lot of people don't actually know what Tesla did. He created the first AC electric motor. Now, why was that important? Because it made the electrical grid far more flexible. Now it was possible to plug in a motor on the, in a house or in a factory, and that would effectively replace steam-based technology, making household appliances viable, including refrigerator, freezer, microwave, washer and dryer, vacuum cleaner, all of these things we take for granted today, and they all run on the AC electric motor. But that wasn't the only impact that the electric motors had. They also made factories far more efficient and productive. Instead of having to have complicated sets of belts running from each station, they could just run in electric lines and plug in electric power tools, which are far more powerful, and it enabled factory designers to lay out their factories for maximum efficiency by people, not just where they had to be because of the belts. So now we're almost ready for number one. But first, I want to go over a few honorable mentions. There were a lot of inventions of the 19th century that I considered for this list. Maybe some of them actually belong in the top 10. I'll let you decide on that one. And now for number one. In my mind, there can be no doubt the steam locomotive was the most important invention of 
the 19th century. In fact, one can make the claim that the steam locomotive was the single most important invention in world history. There are a number of key inventors, but Richard Trevithick, George Stevens, and his son, Robert Stevens, paid played particularly important role. The reason why the steam locomotive was so fundamentally important is because it revolutionized land transportation. Up until this time, water transportation was far more efficient, both for transporting people and for transporting freight. With horse-drawn wagons, it was simply too slow, too expensive, and too dangerous to transport very long distances. So cities tended to be located next to rivers, or in major ocean ports. The steam locomotive fundamentally transformed the geography. It made it possible to build entire transportation grids across land. Now the water was less important. It still certainly hadn't replaced the importance of water. Water transportation is still important today. Now cities could be located away from rivers and ports, and s smaller rural areas could be connected to the transportation grid. So during the 19th century, there was a massive amount of railroad building. It was really, it was really the key transportation network because it enabled point-to-point -point freight transportation to be far more cost-effective, which meant it opened up entirely new markets, and it meant that entire nations and even continents could be part of one giant market. Now you may have noticed certain themes running through this entire list. First of all, most of the inventions were in the last third of the 19th century, and the effects on society were greatly delayed. For many of these inventions, the true impact did not come until the 20th century. And this is a common phenomenon in technological innovation. We tend to think that when a technology is invented, it has a fast impact on society. And when it doesn't, we say, well, it really wasn't that big. But oftentimes, it takes decades or generations to have for the impact of the technology to fully spread throughout the economy. This list also shows the critical importance of four key areas. One is food production and distribution, then energy production and distribution, and transportation and communication. In my mind, those are the four big buckets of technology that are the most important to driving the economy forward. So what do you think? Did I miss a technology? Is there a technology that doesn't deserve to be on that list? Leave a comment and let me know what you think. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. It really helps the channel to grow. If you'd like more resources, I'd recommend going to my website from PovertyToProgress.com. With a free email subscription, you get free ebook samples, free audio samples, and you can buy discounted ebooks and audiobooks. If you insist on paying full price, you can get ebooks, paperbacks, and hardcovers at Amazon, or if you're a bookstore or a library, you can get them at Ingram Spark. Audiobooks are available at Amazon. Audible, and iTunes. If you'd like to know more about books related to this content, I'd recommend going to my other website, which is the techratchet.com. It consists of an online library of over 280 book summaries on the topics of technology, history, economic growth, and progress. And now we're getting on to the exciting part, a free book giveaway of my first book, From Poverty to Progress. If you're a regular listener, you already know the rules. If you don't know the rules, please pause this video and read this description. There's a free book giveaway every week. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next time.